Good morning and welcome to St. Stephen's Episcopal Church in Milburn, New Jersey. We are so glad that you are here for this service, a liturgy of the word from the Book of Common Prayer. This week we have decided to record the service on Zoom so that you have a better sense of the community than just my face and kind of faceless voices in the background. And it's a real special treat this week that we have the Deacon Karen Everhart here with us, and she will be proclaiming the gospel. And now we are just going to get started with um, our opening hymn. If you need the bulletin, you can find it at stephensmilburn.org, and in the top left, there is a Living Our Faith in a Time of Pandemic tab, and if you hit that in about probably two-thirds, three-quarters of the way down, you'll see bulletins. Hit that, and this should be at the top. And again, we're really glad that you are here. Blessed be God, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit, and blessed be God's kingdom, now and forever. Amen. Jesus said, The first commandment is this, Hear, O Israel, the Lord your God is the only Lord. Love the Lord your God with all your heart, with all your soul, with all your mind, and with all your strength. The second is this, Love your neighbor as yourself. There is no greater commandment than these. Let us confess our sins against God and our neighbor. Most merciful God, we confess that we have sinned against you in thought, word, and deed, in what we have done and what we have left undone. We have not loved you with our whole heart. We have not loved our neighbors as ourselves. We are truly sorry, and we humbly repent. For the sake of your Son, Jesus Christ, have mercy on us and forgive us, that we may delight in your will and walk in your ways. To the glory of your name. Amen. Almighty God, have mercy on you, forgive you all our sins, through our Lord Jesus Christ, strengthen you in all goodness, and by the power of the Holy Spirit, keep you in eternal life. Kara, would you pray the Gloria for us, please? 
Glory to God in the highest, and peace to his people on earth. Lord God, Heavenly King, Almighty God and Father, we worship you, we give you thanks, we praise you for your glory. Lord Jesus Christ, only Son of the Father, Lord God, Lamb of God, you take away the sin of the world, have mercy on us. You are seated at the right hand of the Father, receive our prayer. For you alone are the Holy One, you alone are the Lord, you alone are the Most High, Jesus Christ, with the Holy Spirit, in the glory of God the Father. Amen. The Lord be with you. Let us pray. O God, you declare your almighty power chiefly in showing mercy and pity. Grant us the fullness of your grace that we, running to obtain your promises, may become partakers of your heavenly treasure. Through Jesus Christ, our Lord, who lives and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit, one God, forever and ever. Amen. Our first lesson is a reading from the book of Exodus. From the wilderness of sin, the whole congregation of the Israelites joined, journeyed by stages as the Lord commanded. They camped at Rephidim, but there was no water for the people to drink. The people quarreled with Moses and said, give us water to drink. And Moses said to them, why do you quarrel with me? Why do you test the Lord? But the people thirsted there for water, and the people complained against Moses and said, Why did you bring us out of Egypt to kill us and our children and livestock with thirst? So Moses cried out to the Lord, What shall I do with this people? They are almost ready to stone me. <coughs> the Lord said to Moses, Go on ahead of the people and take some of the elders of Israel with you. Take in your hand the staff with which you struck the Nile and go. I will be standing there in front of you on the rock at Horeb. Strike the rock and water will come out of it so that the people may drink. Moses did so in the sight of the elders of Israel. He called the place Massa and Meribah because the Israelites quarreled and tested the Lord saying, is the Lord among us or not? The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Psalm 78. Hear my teaching, O my people. Incline your ears to the words of my mouth. I will open my mouth in a parable. I will declare the mysteries of ancient times. That which we have heard and known and what our forefathers have told us we will not hide from their children. We will recount to generations to come the praiseworthy deeds and the power of the Lord and the wonderful works he has done. He worked marvels in the sight of their forefathers in the land of Egypt, in the field of Zoan. He split open the sea and let them pass through. He made the water stand up like walls. He led them with a cloud by day and all the night through with a glow of fire. He split the hard rocks in the wilderness and gave them drink as from the great deep. He brought streams out of the cliff and the waters gushed out like rivers. Our second lesson is a reading from the letter to the Philippians. If then there is any encouragement in Christ, any consolation from love, any sharing in the spirit, any compassion and sympathy, make my joy complete. Be of the same mind, having the same love, being in full accord and of one mind. Do nothing from selfish ambition or conceit, but in humility, regard others as better than yourselves. Let each of you look not to your own interests, 
but to the interests of others. And let the same mind be in you that was in Christ Jesus, who, though he was in the form of God, did not regard equality with God as something to be exploited, but emptied himself, taking the form of a slave, being born in human likeness. And being found in human form, he humbled himself and became obedient to the point of death, even death on a cross. Therefore, God also highly exalted him and gave him the name that is above every name, so that the name of Jesus, so that at the name of Jesus, every knee should bend in heaven and on earth and under the earth. And every tongue should confess that Jesus Christ is Lord to the glory of God the Father. Therefore, my beloved, just as you have always obeyed me, not only in my presence, but much more now in my absence, work out your own salvation with fear and trembling. For it is God who is at work in you, enabling you both to will and to work for his good pleasure. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. The Holy Gospel of our Lord Jesus Christ, according to Matthew. Glory. Glory to you, Lord Christ. When Jesus entered the temple, the chief priest and the elders of the people came to him as he was teaching and said, By what authority are you doing these things? And who gave you this authority? Jesus said to them, I will also ask you one question. If you tell me the answer, then I will also tell you by what authority I do these things. Did the baptism of John come from heaven, or was it of human origin? And they argued with one another. If we say, from heaven, he will say to us, why then did you not believe him? But if we say, of human origin, we are afraid of the crowd, for all regard John as a prophet. So they answered Jesus, we do not know. And he said to them, 
neither will I tell you by what authority I am doing these things. What do you think? A man had two sons. He went to the first and said, son, go and work in the vineyard today. He answered, I will not. But later he changed his mind and went. The father went to the second and said the same. And he answered, I go, sir. But he did not go. Which of the two did the will of his father? They said, the first. Jesus said to them, truly, I tell you, the tax collectors and the prostitutes are going into the kingdom of God ahead of you. For John came to you in the way of righteousness, and you did not believe him. But the tax collectors and the prostitutes believed him. And even after you saw it, you did not change your minds and believe him. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, Lord Christ. So today, um, I'm going to do more of kind of a brief reflection than a, a sermon. Um, you may be able to hear it in my voice, but I'm having a little bit of allergy-related voice issues, including some coughing. So um, I am opting to go short and hopefully sweet about um, just this image that I had as I was reading the... Um, reading from Exodus, specifically this, this image of a rock and striking the rock and the water comes. And I don't know if you've ever tried to crack a rock with, you know, even a, like a piece of heavy metal pipe. It's, it, takes, it takes a lot to break stone. Um, probably why, you know, stonemasons are typically people much larger and, and, and stronger than I am, right? But um, so I had this image, and part of that was because I'm reading a book, um, actually I can show you, I'm reading this book called Living Into God's Dream by, it's Dismantling Racism in America, and it's edited by Catherine Meeks. And there were two things that... I just that I connected for me with that image of Moses striking the rock and having the water come. And you know, I think it's important to mention, remind us that Moses was having a bit of a rough go of it. 40 years in the debt in the you know, in the wilderness trying to lead the people to freedom. And you know, people were tired and they were cranky and they have been challenging everything that he has said and you know he's he's kind of at his wit's end um and yet he chooses to turn to god and chooses to pay attention and then the people have water right um and the connection i made with that is this this these words from um, Luther Smith Jr., who is um, a professor emeritus at Candler School of Theology, but he's talking about the calling to racial justice and dismantling racism, and he says Christian commitment, however, should never have being against evil as its ultimate focus. If our faith is reduced to only being against evil, then evil consumes our attention and energies. We then have a perverted devotion to evil, a devotion driven by outrage. The Christian faith is based upon being committed to God's dream for us personally and community, communally. Um, our living creatively into the future involves our devotion to the compelling vision of God's realm of Shalom. And the connection for me between this image of Moses, you know, striking a rock and, and, and having water flow is because I know I've talked to so many people who are feeling so hopeless and are feeling like the challenges that we are facing right now with COVID, with 
you know, black bodies being murdered with massive unemployment, with a regression in the progress made for women's, you know, rights since, you know, in this century, actually, in, in my lifetime, most of them. Um, you know, all of these things that, you know, we just feel like we have to just, it's like beating your head, right? It is so hard to crack open the possibilities that we have to live God's dream. And yet, and we get angry about it. And so then we focus on those, those things and those people that we identify as being bad or as evil. You know, we get caught up in naming it and labeling it um, and labeling other people and not taking a step back and saying, we've got to focus on what we can do individually and in community to, 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 to crack it open to take the next step, to not get discouraged. And I will tell you that I think that Moses had it right. I think the only place to turn when we feel that discouragement, when we feel hopeless, is to God. Because it isn't us who is going to, it isn't us alone. I should say, who is going to create the change. It is us doing it centered in our faith with a sense that this is what God is calling us to do. And then God's going to do the heavy lifting. You know, God will give us what we need to break that stone so that it isn't a trickle of water. It is the abundant waters of life that God promises to all of us. And so this image, I can't get it out of my head. And um, I'm hoping it resonates with some of you, this idea that it is a long, hard road. And it is longer and harder for some of us than it has been for others. And we need to, we need to know that. And we just need to keep going. And we just need to know that, you know, we tend to say this is our vision. You know, we say, you know, Martin Luther King had a vision for the world. And that is true. But even for the greats, like Martin Luther King, the vision wasn't theirs first. It was God's vision. And they were simply following that call and striking stone upon, after stone after stone until they got little trickles of water that eventually will become a torrent. Amen. Let us affirm our faith in the words of the Nicene Creed. We believe in one God, the Father, the Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, of all that is seen and unseen. We believe in one Lord, Jesus Christ, the only Son of God, eternally begotten of the Father, God from God, light from light, true God from true God, begotten, not made, of one being with the Father. Through him all things were made. For us and for our salvation he came down from heaven. By the power of the Holy Spirit, he became incarnate from the Virgin Mary and was made man. For our sake, he was crucified under Pontius Pilate. He suffered death and was buried. On the third day, he rose again in accordance with the scriptures. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again in glory to judge the living and the dead, and his kingdom will have no end. We believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord, the giver of life, who proceeds from the Father and the Son. With the Father and the Son, he is worshiped and glorified. He has spoken through the prophets. We believe in one holy Catholic and apostolic church. We acknowledge one baptism for the forgiveness of sins. We look for the resurrection of the dead and the life of the world to come. Amen. Prayers of the people. 
Prayers for Racial Justice and Reconciliation from the Standing Committee on Liturgy and Music General Convention. Let us pray for the church and for the world. God of love, we pray for your church, for Michael Curry, our presiding bishop, Carly Hughes, our bishop, for all lay and ordained ministers, and for all who seek you in the community of the faithful. Equip us with compassion and love to carry out your work of reconciliation in the world. God of love, hear our prayers for the church. God of freedom, we pray for our nation and all the nations of the world, for peace and unity across barriers of language, color, and creed, for elected and appointed leaders, that they would serve the common good, inspire all people with courage to speak out against hatred, to actively resist evil, unite the human family in bonds of love. God of freedom, hear our prayers for the world. God of justice, we pray for the earth, your creation entrusted to our care, for the animals and birds, the mountains and oceans, and all parts of your creation that have no voice of their own. Stir up in us a thirst for justice that protects the earth and all its resources, that we may leave to our children's children the legacy of beauty and abundance that you have given us. God of justice, hear our prayers for the earth. God of peace, we pray for this community, for our local leaders, for our schools and markets, for our neighborhoods and workplaces. Kindle in every heart a desire for equality, respect, and opportunity for all. Give us courage to strive for justice and peace among all people, beginning here at home. God of peace, hear our prayers for this community. God of mercy, we pray for all in any kind of need or trouble, for those whose lives are closely linked with ours and those connected to us as part of the human family, for refugees and prisoners, for the sick and suffering, the lonely and despairing, for those facing violence, for all held down by prejudice and injustice, awaken in us compassion and humility of spirit as we seek and serve Christ in all persons. God of mercy, hear our prayers for all who are in need. Let us pray for Jeff Loggins, Jimmy Hassenkamp, Ian Genesco, the McManus family, the Blanchard family, Donna Ridgey, Eleanor Robinson, Bernard and Nathan, the Fitzgerald family, Jack Moreno, Stephanie Gubin, Sue McBeth, Francis, Marcia Main, Christine Conti, Xander, Evan, Felder Dorn, James Tramberg, Debbie and Jeff Robarge, Alex Cole. God of grace, we pray for those who have died for the faithful in every generation who have worked for justice, for prophets who called us to racial reconciliation, for martyrs who died because of hatred, and for all the communion of saints. Make us faithful to your call to proclaim your good news by word and example, and bring us at last into the glorious company of the saints in light. God of grace, Hear our prayers for those who have died. Hear our prayers, holy God. Breathe your spirit over us and all the earth, that barriers would crumble and division cease. Make us more fully your co-healers of the broken world. Unite us with all people in bonds of love, that the whole earth and all its peoples may be at peace through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. A prayer for the power of the Spirit among the people of God. God of all power and love, we give thanks for your unfailing presence and the hope you provide in times of uncertainty and loss. <coughs> Send your Holy Spirit to enkindle in us your holy fire. Revive us to live as Christ's body in the world, a people who pray, 
worship, learn, break bread, share life, heal neighbors, bear good news, seek justice, rest and grow in the spirit, wherever and however we gather. Unite us in common prayer and send us in common mission, that we and the whole creation might be restored and renewed. Through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Let us pray the prayer that Jesus taught us. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory, forever and ever. Amen. And now may the peace of God, which passes all understanding, keep your hearts and minds in the knowledge and love of God and of his Son, our Savior, Jesus Christ. Amen. Let us go forth into the world rejoicing in the power of the Holy Spirit. Alleluia, alleluia. Thanks be to God. Alleluia, alleluia.